Today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Delete me, Zoc Doc, and AG1. Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. Welcome uh, to the Nate Land Podcast. Um, Nate. Brian Bates, Dusty Slay, and uh, filling in for uh, Aaron Weber is uh, Joe Zimmerman. Uh, oh. Aaron Weber had some come up kind of last minute. He he was fired so, for making a joke yeah. about me being fired from yeah. the podcast last yeah. week. Yeah. It was so convincing that we had to go ahead and cut ties with it. Yeah, yeah, he's gone. That. He'll never yeah. be back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm honored <laughs> honored that you brought me in in his place. <laughs> I feel like yeah. you're in Nate's shot, so I like that. You're kind of yeah. Ari. Ari, oh, we moved the camera. <laughs> As long, yeah, I changed. I made things change already. <laughs> yeah. You, that is Joe. Joe already made already made everybody. I would. It up. Uh, Joe is someone that you just when he's on, you just stuff will change. Your yeah. routine will change. Yeah, your routine. You like mine. Yeah, because you're just floating around. <laughs> yeah, I I got you know like I a got, guy that's lived on his own for a long time. I mean, Bates was a similar. Yeah, he's. A, Difficult to be with because you guys don't have, you know, you're just used to your own time. Nate tells me that a lot. He says, you're difficult to be with. <laughs> yeah, no. And like Bates. Yeah. Yeah. You're a lot like Brian Bates. You're a lot. Mm-hmm. No. It's, uh, I enjoy having both of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, he took you to Australia, so he must like you. That's true. Yeah. That's a good sign. Mm-hmm. That is a good it's sign. A good that sign. is a big trip mm-hmm. for someone that you don't like. Yes. That'd be tough. Yeah. yeah. For so sure. it's a long one. He, yeah, no, he had me carry all his bags. So, <laughs> yeah, but it seemed cool. Yeah, uh, like Joe, uh, Joe's special the cool classic is out on my YouTube uh, channel, Nate Land uh, Entertainment. Uh, so go it's check great. that out. It's great. Uh, yeah, Nate got directed. Great, great response. I've directed it and gave Nate a shot. Yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> Gave a, a kid a shot. There you go. Shot. We have that coming out. And then we have uh, the showcase, which should be out now. Uh, it came out yesterday. And uh, we've got a lot going on, Nate Land. We're uh-huh. having a good announcement for it. Like, there's a lot of good, good plans. We're changing, I think, the Nate Land company, I believe. I'm going to, I'm changing. I like that. Like, it's a, it feels like a staple. Yeah, the Nate. I Land mean, company. we're not, and we're not a staple, but it just feels, it feels more what we are is, you know, a middle, company. Of, middle, a company. Yeah. yeah, that's what we are as a company. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> used to be entertainment, but now you're all business. Yeah, yeah. The, the entertainment's it's gone. Entertainment. We do entertainment in the company. Do but, you? Uh, ha, is there a way to be an angel investor? Uh, yeah, just cash. Cool. Straight to me. <laughs> Great. What's the return? There he doesn't no know what he either. <laughs> there is no return, Joe. So I just give you cash. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm invest. Interested. I mean, get in there. I'm yeah. interested. You know what I mean? Take yeah. a chance. I Joe. feel good about it. Take a chance. Keep the entertainment rolling. So when we go through our business meeting, I go, right, don't, don't forget, I got Joe's $40. <laughs> <laughs> just if anything comes up. <laughs> If he has any demands, listen to him because he's a top investor. He's a top. He's their only investor yeah. at forty five dollars. Yeah. I would love to be the only angel investor for Nathan Company. What does the it Nate mean Land. to be an angel investor? Uh, it's before all I know is that it's before a company goes public on the stock market. Those super wealthy people can get in early, give f- give some mon- give some funding early, get in get in ground level. A lot of that happened in Silicon Valley. I'm ground guessing level. you're. Focusing on the angel part. Well, I just wonder what it means. Yeah, mm-hmm. I get investor. I don't know why it's called angel investor. They're like, I guess maybe you're like, before it's big, you're like, hey, I'll still, I'll yeah. come in and help you out. Yeah, it's before it's, this is big. It's like we're, str- it's the hypothetical we're struggling, and then some big person comes in and is like, I'm going to give you a million bucks. I'm going to help you out. Yeah. When a- when Aaron comes back, we'll Google it and find out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Next week we'll. I find forgot out, I'm folks. working the computer. <laughs> yes, I got it though. Oh okay. Uh, we had. Can y'all see? I don't is know if he I can fine? See. Or do you need him to move or anything? Move back. I can move. I was just trying yeah. to look at everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can screw the chair up and then just, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I won't look at Brian. You no, can. Or try Dusty. not to. You can You can do a little. <laughs> is that good? Don't it's, move past that. It yet. says here they're wealthy private investors focused on financing small businesses, business, I can't read, business ventures in exchange for equity. 
So it doesn't sound like much of an angel to me. It seems like they're wanting something out of it. They get something. They get a yeah, they get a good return when the company does well. Yeah. Yeah. Big return. Right. Let's hope Nate Land Company does good. Mm-hmm. Will you go public eventually? I just did. I just said it. <laughs> 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 so, just yeah, that's it. how you get it, on the stock market. Yeah. Too late to be an angel investor. Though. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I <work>. declare bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah. 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 What I want is a yeah. What I want is a Nateland Company penny stock. That's what I want. Okay. No, that doesn't do anything for you. I don't even know what that means. You give me a penny. <laughs> yeah, I don't. There's the whole penny stock market. Never uh, mind. Penny stocks refers to a small company <laughs> stock that job, typically Dusty. trades for less than five dollars per share. Oh, well, Still that, doesn't mean a lot to me. <laughs> Is that the thing they made money on Wolf of Wall Street <laughs> in the TV show? <laughs> in the TV show Wolf. Of I Wall mean Street. the the movie Wolf of Wall Street. Is that didn't they do like the penny stocks? They did. Yeah, you can make a ton of money on penny stocks if you're. If you know, if you know what you're doing, which yeah. I don't. Okay. But yeah. No. Right. Because they're, they're tiny. They're, they're, you know, under they're small, under a hundred million dollar companies. Like paying the penny slots. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, so yeah, there's a lot right. of good stuff. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of fun stuff. I'm very excited about this stuff. We got the showcase has got, uh, I, what is it? Six comics, three comics, an episode, uh, Dusty, uh, Bates and Aaron hosting, uh, two episodes each, six episodes, three comics an episode, very funny comics. Uh, you know, it's like TV clean material. So it's, you know, that's what we're, that's now, what we're is it just for. one episode out so far? It, it, one episode out. Uh-huh. Is that the one that I'm in? Yep. All right. I believe so. Who is your favorite? I'm saying this and I have not looked at anything. Who is your favorite of the three hosts? Huh? They all maybe, do great. Maybe go to. Nate Land Entertainment is up there. And yeah, click on that. Yeah, that thing says at Nate Land is uh <clears throat> is the YouTube. The so that's videos. good. At Nate Land, we'll change that to Nate Land Company. We're we're still we're still in the the mix of changing all that stuff. It didn't look like it's out yet. Just it's not. It's it comes out Tuesday. We're Monday. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't know y'all were being this exact. I thought you said on the last time it comes out October first. I don't know. Okay. I think it comes out tomorrow. Okay. Well, I'm pumped for it. All right. So, which when people are listening, that's why you act like it's already out because it will be. I got you. I thought I'm very excited about this one. As Joe, Joe's was great. You go watch Joe. Joe's is doing very well. It's doing very well. And, uh, Joe's looks great. Joe's is, you're the, the different one. That's why I like, it was very different than Mike and Greg. Yeah. And the Joe's very, very funny. I'm a big Joe fan. Obviously he's taking him everywhere. Uh, so super fun, uh, super fun to watch, super funny. And then we got the showcase, which is showing a bunch of different comics. Oh, and you so, can see where Dusty stopped watching. 26 be, minute mark. Seem to be reading notes here during the special. Uh, it's, oh, a little, it's a little part of the skit. Yeah. A that's skit. a, one of the better parts. <laughs> <laughs> that one's so funny. 26 minutes folks. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I mean, all the parts are funny, but that, I, I'm a bit, I love that. Oh, nice. Yeah. The horoscope, I, evil yeah, horoscope. Yeah, yes, yes. No, Here, this is not my YouTube. I wouldn't pull up my YouTube public. Did you read an evil, do you know see. one? Oh, that's true. I, I think I can remember most of the evil horoscope. What's your, do you know your horoscope? I do know it, yeah. Yeah. That's um, crazy. I would think you would know it. Well, I learned it, you know, fence. before I yeah. woke up to yeah. Satanism. So what, uh. <laughs> what is your uh <laughs> i feel like it's more fun to say it that way yeah 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 you yeah. know your sign what's your sign i'm a taurus uh you share it with hitler oh yeah the whole That's bit good. the whole bit is if 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 somebody gives you a hard time about your horoscope right they say oh yeah you can remember an evil historical figure for all 12 horoscopes and then you can call it out oh. for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's very so good. if you give me guff for being Scorpio, I can be like, oh, Taurus, that's a good one. Hitler's a Taurus. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I, and then I go through the crowd and ask people what, what their signs are. Yeah, it's are. very fun. Yeah. I like that. Uh, yeah, it's good. Hitler, uh, Bernie Madoff, and Saddam Hussein. All right. All Taurus. Mm-hmm. A lot Dusty of power. Slay. A lot and of Dusty power Slay. in a Taurus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is a lot of power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very authoritarian. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's true. known for being bullhead, a bullheaded sign. Is he stubborn? Yeah. 
I would say so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you got some of his beliefs, uh, he's about the most stubborn you can be. Classic Taurus. Yeah, yeah. classic Taurus. I didn't believe horoscopes so right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they always can get you. If you start <laughs> reading about them, you go, oh, I am like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. What are you? Scorpio. Oh, Scorpio. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, More I'm, commonality. Scorpio, we share. Between the two of uh, you guys. I believe it's. Are you Scorpio? Uh, yeah. Known for being uh, ambitious. Mm -hmm, that's me. Machiavellian. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And Charles Manson is a Scorpio. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Well, that's uh, how you look at it. Very jealous. Does he get jealous? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. He's jealous of you right now, knowing this stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Classic Scorp. Yep. Classic Scorp. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Aries. Aries, I believe, is... Ooh, I'm I'm not remembering Aries. It oh. must be a good sign. Yeah, I believe Aries is Kim Jong Un's dad, but I'll have to double check. <laughs> yeah, but he, you know, well, he was he a great do, golfer, right? just like you. Yeah, he has the oh world, world record, hole in record. one, and every he claims that too. And he was really the every first hole. one, right? He started the whole. Not he didn't start the country of North Korea, but he started this whole separatist thing, right? Yeah. I know, yeah. I know that there's Kim Jong Un, his dad, and his grandpa were were the main dudes. Yeah. So the yeah the main the, <laughs> the first ones. one yeah he's like all right, and then the, the rest have just been kind of you know following in his footsteps. But he really was like, I'm gonna separate myself. But I think he said, I admire that about him. I think he went out on a golf. That's course. what we're trying to do with the Nate Land Company. <laughs> <laughs> separate ourselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but have you heard the story of his golf score? No. He went out on a golf course with 11 security guards, his first time ever playing golf. And after 18 holes, he said he shot a 26, which is like 12 hole in ones and six <laughs> twos. <Yeah. laughs> and he's never played before. And the bodyguards are just like, yep, that's what he shot. Yeah. <laughs> what he has 11 witnesses. <laughs> Or the score of twenty six. Wow. Yeah, that what happened on the twos? But my thinking is, <laughs> yeah. my thinking is, my thinking is, he's so bad at golf, knows nothing about the sport that he's like, what's a lie that sounds good? And he's like twenty six. Oh yeah, he yeah. can't be hole in one. He can't go eighteen. Time. Yeah, yeah. He was probably tempted to say eighteen. I bet he goes to his friends. It was an eighteen, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I don't want to brag. Let's. I don't want to be obnoxious. Let's say twenty six. 26, which is about 32 strokes better than any other score in the history of golf. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Maybe yeah. North Korea has the best lawns for it, though. Maybe it's mm -hmm. a good, you know what I mean? You may be right. How long are these courses, too? Do they even say the course? You know, I, I wish I, I knew put. the course, but it was probably one of the first golf courses in North Korea would be my guess. Yeah. It'd be great if you had, and that record was, the course record was 18. <laughs> Or 26. I bet it's up there. <laughs> yeah, it should be up there. Yeah. That would be, a lot of people want to play that course. Yeah. To go, I can't believe he shot a 26. Yeah. That's hard to believe. 11 that, witnesses. Yeah. Should get that on the PGA. Yeah. Is that a tour? They should PGA do that course. Yeah. And he goes, let's see if y'all can do it. Never. Yeah, I don't think he ever played again either. I think he played once. Well, it's, what's hard. the point of it? Exactly. Yeah. To Too master easy. the sport. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the point? Uh, we had a fun weekend. Uh, a fun. This has been a couple weeks we've been out. I know I've uh, missed a few, and uh, Vecchione did good uh, filling in, and uh, we got Dusty back. And um, yeah, this this I month has been yeah, he's gone. We I, I got a lot of stuff this month. I'm home for uh, I think about a day and a half, and then we head out. Uh, I go to uh, our. We were in uh, Boise. Uh, we were in Boise this just this weekend. Unreal show, Salt Lake City, uh, where the jazz play, and that was very special. A lot of people. I'm the uh for for a stay at that arena. I'm uh the n number one comedian. All right, second <laughs> all time entertainment to Garth Brooks. Oh wow. come on, that's big yeah. time. I calculated if I headlined 40 club weeks, <laughs> if I headlined 40 club weeks, I would perform for 10,000 less people than those two nights. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's how many people it was. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was like 10,000 people, 11,000 people, 8,000 people. It was crazy. It was like, yeah. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thanks. It was, it, well, it's very, it's very, very nice that, uh, obviously, 
Uh, Utah is a, I go there a lot. Very special place. Uh, but I mean, everywhere Boise, I mean, uh, I, you know, I'm going to be blanking on where we were even before that, but it's, and then this week we go to, uh, Portland, Maine and like Rochester and then Radio City. Uh, it's a main just, hat I'm wearing right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. There you I go. love Portland, man. Mm-hmm. It's great. Danny Ainge came out. Danny, we met Danny Ainge. Really? Utah. You, General yeah. manager of the Utah Jazz, I believe. Yeah. Wow. Great dude. Uh, yeah, it was, it was some, and the shows were really great. Uh, the crowds were so good. So good. I like arena. We, just, I was, we talked a lot about this. Arenas are, I know they're big and all that, but I uh, really, I, I mean, I like doing them in the fact that you have these screens so you can see. It's almost watching a special taping live, I would imagine, you know, for the, because you know, I, I mean, I've been to a ton of shows and not comedy, but music or anything. You, you always end up kind of watching the screen, but that's always a thing that you kind of think, well, I don't want to, I feel like I'm just watching the screen. I'm not watching, but I mean, you would have to be in a small, small venue to actually see a person's face. Even if you're in a thousand seat place, if you're in the back, you can't, it's very hard to see yeah. the person's facial expressions. People in my family used to take binoculars. They would sit so far away at concerts yeah. before, I guess it was before screens. I mm -hmm. don't know, but they would take binoculars. I saw guy. a guy we met had binoculars. Oh yeah. 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 I, I, I could see my, it. My kind of person. To be yeah. Honest. yeah. Yeah. Joe likes some nice binoculars. Yeah. He has some, he could get it to him right now. I got him right in my golf bag. Mm -hmm. All right. On the garage. Uh, so it's, but I mean, with the screens, I looked at it as like, I was like, you know what? It's it's like it's the 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 great part of this is you're in a room together with a lot of people, and it's fun just to see everybody have a, a fun time and laugh, and it's contagious. And uh, I remember people would afterwards, some would say, "Man, this guy behind us was just dying laughing so hard," and we were laughing at like how hard he was laughing. But it's like people just love seeing people have joy. And that's yeah, and that's what's so great with the ring because you get stuck in a spot where it's hard to any thing you go to, it's gonna be hard to see someone's face. But with the screen, I mean, I can do facial expressions more than I could in a theater because you have a screen there, and they get big laughs because you're able to. It's like watching a special, but being there and also being in the moment. Yeah, and it's an event, right? It's like you can watch uh, comedy at home, but you're like, you still got all your regular distractions. You got your phone. You got, uh, yeah. you know, you can pause it. It's like you're in an event. It is fun to be in an event. It's, yeah, it's a, you get in a groove and it's just, yeah, it's a special. And everybody that comes out is just nice and uh, wonderful. We love it. It's also, you get a little adrenaline looking up at, looking up at 10,000 people. It's, I, I'm like, I'm just a, a tiny man standing yeah. where the Utah Jazz play. It was, yeah, it was so high. They just go, I mean, it was when you walked out, because we have a curtain up, you know, like right when you walk out on the stage. So we're not just, everybody can just see everything backstage. But you can see the top. And I mean, it's just all the way to the top. And it's, I mean, the fact that people come out, I, yeah, it's, you, yeah, you have, you have dreams of it happening like this, but it's every single time it's overwhelming. It's, 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 yeah. it's, uh, it's pretty great. special. My impression of Nate doing arenas, he gets, he gets, he does his, he does his final joke. <sighs> Crowd goes wild, standing ovation. He comes off stage. You know, I kind of, I kind of like arenas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're okay. They're all right. They're, I like, you know what? I think I like arenas. <laughs> yeah. You're like, well, yeah, you like the, the yeah, screaming, the screaming 10,000 yeah. fans yeah. who just laughed for I an did. hour straight. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the fun part is making that many people laugh that, you know, that's the goal is like, cause every, I do it every hour. You got to, the next one's, I, you got to somewhat, I mean, it's not like one can, I guess people are going to like, I mean, so many people like the Tennessee kids, but cause it's the first one they saw or the, whatever they saw. Uh, and, but you just try to make it this moment where like, if you can just have them laughing the whole time and just having a good time and they leave just like what a you know like they feel fulfilled i mean that's the goal yeah. that's what we're trying to do at nate lane company yeah. all you gotta yeah. do create some stuff yeah we're doing get uh, your angel investments in now get your angel investments Pro america uh, 
Co America. What? Cramerica Industries. Cramerica. Remember when Kramer started his own company? Oh yeah. That's yeah. what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Nate Land Company. We're we are. We're gonna have we're gonna have great stuff. Uh there's a lot of stuff planning. There's a lot of stuff that we're planning to do uh with this, trying to make stuff that's you know, uh like all these specials that we're about to do. It's comedy, you know, it, like I said, it's comedy that you can go with your whole family. That's that's the thing that I want it to be. And we're not making comedy for kids, but if your your kids can listen, you can decide if you want your kids to listen. I mean, they're you know, I'm not saying everything's going to be. You're not going to like every single thing, or you might not this and that pick. But it's like the the we're I'm doing it with the idea of you in mind, the watcher, and uh, you know it's stuff you don't have to turn off in your kids. Well, it's just stuff like that. It's like stuff that you can feel. It's a little safe. I mean, I understand having kids. Uh, you know, it's like this stuff. That, Try not to make it uncomfortable. Yeah, and if you're like a grown kid, you can still watch it with your parents. Like if you're in your 20s or 30s, you can watch with your parents and not be embarrassed yeah. about what's happening. That's the whole, you yeah. know. But I mean, we have 10-year-olds come to shows. I, I like that. I, I I think when they're that young, some some of them, because they listen to this podcast, get everything. Cause, you know, And then some kids, you know, they get they get what they get. But they love seeing their parents laugh hard. And then you love seeing your kid like get stuff. And you're just trying to make it that kind of thing where it's, you know, even the younger generation feels like they're listening to an adult uh, programming kind of. But it's it's okay for them. You know, the, the goal of it is it's okay for them to yeah. listen. You're not going to be like, oh, man. That's really, really hard to. You're about the only comic I know well, out there doing it, really. I mean. Uh, at that level. No, Brian. All you got to do is make everybody laugh for ninety <laughs> straight minutes. A whole family in a giant arena. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to yeah. do. I mean, I know other clean comics, but they don't reach ten year olds and seventy year olds. I think how you do it is you're not trying to reach ten year olds and seventy year olds. I'm just trying not to make my parents upset with what I'm doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's all I do. Everything I put out, yeah. I just don't want my parents to be embarrassed or mad and they would come watch that's yeah. really how i just do every joke i do every everything is just i don't want my parents i think a lot of yeah you know my wife's parents i just don't want any the older generation to be like kind of disappointed or like just kind of like you know i think about them a lot because yeah. it's just i just feel like they don't it's and not like i'm trying to make it for them because you don't have to make it for them they get everything you don't have to like d- like dumb it down for kids or for uh, adults. You can, you just do your act, and then just don't do. You know, it's I, well. That's what I'm doing too. You're just doing it at a much much higher level. How does your dad feel about you comparing him to a gorilla? Yeah. Now, hmm? uh, he likes it. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I'm an asset. I do compare him to Grill in this new act. I find that the higher the success goes, the more your parents are willing to go, hey, that's okay. Oh, yes. You know, they're like, <laughs> yes. I, you know, I don't mind that you say that. I told a joke. I said it this week on at Utah. I just said, but I, it's funny because I grew up, my parents are Catholic. And then, uh, or they, grew, they grew up Catholic. And then, but we were, but I was raised Baptist. And so they went to Baptist from here. So I have... All of the Catholic guilt without any of the fun of Catholic. <laughs> and then just the strictness of Baptist, which is the most strict of like you get, especially not, not as much now, but when we were growing up, the Baptist was the most. For sure. They could get disappointed or real fast at you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that's just what it was now. It's not like that now. And uh, so I have... You already have like, you already feel, so every day is like a pretty tough day when you're like, you got the Baptist, like, I can't, I'm not supposed to do any of this stuff. And then you get the, then I get the Catholic guilt, but without the Catholic is probably the funnest one. They They get loose with it. They get very loose with it. Yeah. The mom's the Catholic? No, both. Oh, okay. I grew up non-baptized and I was jealous of people that were baptized. Oh yeah. You can get baptized. Yeah. Anytime. Anytime you want to. He's there. I'm a little. I'm a little self conscious. Like I picture. I picture it's just babies and then me showing up. Well, it's better than going to hell. <laughs> right. Right. I know it's it's tough though. It's tough though. It's a little. You know, I don't know. It's I mean, all yeah, yeah. A little self conscious though. Yeah, you know? yeah. But that's fine. You can. 
as you talk to Hitler down there, you will say, yeah. I just never did it. Because it was, I think Hitler probably did it. Because <laughs> he was like, well, I was, I was going to try it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it was a uh, fun. Uh, yeah, it's been, this tour has been special. It's been great. We're off and running. We're doing, uh, you know, we're going to have a big, big thing. You're at the beginning of this Nate Land Company stuff. Uh, we got the show. We got uh, the three specials are out that we directed. And then uh, we got the showcase coming out. We're going to hopefully do more of those. We got some other plans, some other stuff coming uh, and try to really make something, you know, I don't know. We'll see what it, what it ends up becoming. But just trying to, you know, not be, just yeah. be entertained. I'm sold. You got my cash. Uh, yeah. Where were you guys? So I was uh, Saturday. I was in Wilmington, Ohio, doing a Joe Zimmerman gig. Mm. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot about it. I think I canceled it for a Nate gig. You did. Yeah. You did. So I take your <laughs> secondhand gigs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are the odds of this? Full circle. <laughs> yeah, There's, your picture was still up on the wall. So, yeah. uh, but it was a great gig. Uh, very fun show. I met our intern Amelia for the first time. All right, she brought me this. Uh, uh, world's, world's best, best boss. boss coffee mug. So yeah. thank you, Amelia. And I met a lot of folks there and that was a lot of fun. And then last night I was um, in Philadelphia at Helium Comedy Club. Oh, yeah. And Well, yesterday afternoon, I had a 4.30 show. Eagles game at one o'clock. Oh. As you know, I was up against it. So the game should have been over around four. Last play of the game, Reds, uh, sorry, not Redskins, Commanders tied up, goes into overtime. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody who is there is in the bar watching the game. Mm. And I was like, is there any way we could wait a little bit to let the game be over and then the manager was like well we got another show after you so we can't wait he's like we can wait five minutes <laughs> and the eagles kicked the game-winning field goal right when the announcer's making the welcome to whatever yeah you know so everybody saw it they cheered yeah and the show went on and it, it was, was great good. yeah oh great right. that's great that's great a little pressure there yeah I went to uh skyline comedy club in uh wisconsin in um Appleton, Wisconsin. Yeah. It was great. A couple of sold out shows, a couple of shows that uh, were definitely not sold out, and uh, <laughs> but they were all fun. It was They're a blast. Fun. It was great. I loved it. Appleton, such a nice town. Yeah. I had a great time. It is a cool spot. Uh, Joe was with me, and oh. so we yeah. we went through played it. Played golf with Tony Fino. Played golf with Tony Fino. Uh, Joe's a very good golfer. I say Joe played college golf with Davidson. I, it's true. Davidson, uh, shout out to my boy Steph Curry. Yeah, they went to school at the same time. Close personal friend. And he's a great golfer. School at the same time at the same place? Uh, same team. We were on this basketball team together. Yeah. Is that yeah. true? No. <laughs> oh, Joe's yeah. a sneaky athlete. Yeah. I mean, his energy and everything, his look comes off like this guy wouldn't know about sports. <laughs> but it's – Joe is good at basketball. He's good at uh, golf. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Billiards. Any highlights Billiards. of you playing <laughs> basketball on the internet anywhere? Uh, there's a there's an old comedy sketch of me doing a comedy basketball thing, but, but no real uh, no real basketball. Yeah, I don't know if we have to look that up. <laughs> no, you don't. Well, well, I'm just trying to you know I'm trying to be useful. You're here. trying to be well, the computer here, yeah. guy. Yeah. Well, since we're talking about sports, Dusty, instead of that, why don't you tell us about game time? Oh, that's a great idea. <clears throat> Our schedules usually have us buying tickets the day of events. Instead of getting stressed out, we like the game time app. It has great prices on last-minute tickets and flash deals. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, theater, and, of course, comedy near you. We like the Game Time app because, uh, because they make it so easy to see the seat views right there in the app. It's very quick and simple to use. They are the only ticket sales app that I know of that offers lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and job loss protection. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. It's the fastest growing ticketed app in the country for a reason. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. That's big time. The game time guarantee means you'll never, but <clears throat> I'm sorry. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. <laughs> the <If> opposite you... <laughs> of never. <laughs> <laughs> if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code NATE 
for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code NATE for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. There we go. Boom. Uh, let's start with you guys' comments. Uh, boo. Bo. Boo. Bo. Bo. Bo Avilia. I always spell like Boo a Hossler, weird way Bo to spell Bo, though, didn't it? I know, a golfer, Bo Hostler, and he's, that's how he spells it. So, Bo, Bo Avila. Sounds like a woman's name, though, at the end. <laughs> <laughs> the last name? The last name does. You know? Yeah. I, I think bet. there could be a whole segment where you give Nate a word and he just tries to pronounce it. Yeah, it's kind of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could listen one time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I usually, I wonder if you've ever said that to someone like, you got a lady's last name. Hmm. I don't know. A villa. Bo a villa. Maybe it's Maybe. a lady. Maybe. Maybe it is. Uh, I usually listen during my commute to and from work. I just took a drink of water when Nate brought up the scenario of Dylan Lee hearing that John was there to see him. Pretty sure I stopped breathing trying to hold in the water. Tough time. Go Jackets. People love that. They liked, yeah. I had, a, I had a guy yell go jackets this weekend yeah. and I didn't like it was even uh, in Idaho Falls uh, they were uh, great too yeah even so because you people you bring the energy that's like what's so wonderful and like, we have a 3 p.m. show in Salt Lake City great Sunday shows great you know usually typical of Friday and Saturday everybody kind of that's when they typically going out but everybody comes very excited we're adding sh- all these shows so we have to do them sometimes at weirder times and all this but we will do our. We'll do the best we can to bring you that. But I mean, I, you guys have been really great at no matter what time. You know, the shows have been awesome. Uh, but a guy yelled "Go Jackets" last night, and uh, I first I was like, "What?" And then I was like, "Oh." And then I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And I was like, "Go Jackets." Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I love. Uh, yeah, I love Go Jackets. Grant Morgan. Nate said if the NFL fined him for throwing the football in the stands, he would tell them they had to give the money to charity. And Aaron said that would never happen. But that is what the NFL as well as other professional leagues do with the money they collect from fines. They give it to the charity. Oh, that's nice. I yeah. doubt it, though. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It goes to a charity. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just a tax write-off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shelter. Yeah, was, tax shelter. Yeah. Thanks, Grant. Uh, <laughs> no, that is nice. Yeah. That is it very is nice. nice. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff J. Snyder. <laughs> Baker's Dozen was right. That's a we call him B names. Uh, I don't know if I want to explain that. Any any B name that's they're talking about me. Yeah, yeah Bogo. I remember Bogo. Oh yeah, I love Bogo tour. Oh okay. okay. Yeah. The Bogo. I told him about the Bogo tour this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was that's a fun amazing. one. Love that. Uh, Baker's dozen was right. The Braves did call themselves America's team during the TBS days. Ted Turner started in the 1970s as the owner of the team. It was almost a joke most of the time because they were really bad for a long time. The Braves yeah, have always been America's team today. Yeah. Well, they used to be – you weren't on this episode, but I said they were America's team, and no one agreed. They are like, no, that's just the Cowboys. It's because they were on, what, TNT or TBS every night, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ted Turner. Made yes. him, he made them America's team. I feel like they are. Still are. Yeah. All always right. will be. It was that John, John sure. Smoltz, Greg Maddox era. Yeah. Dale Murphy. Tom Gliman. Boom. <laughs> That was the Fred first. McGriff. That was when I was collecting <laughs> baseball cards. Yeah, mm, me Back too. Big time. Yeah, uh, Roy Opata Olindi. Roy, nice job, Nate. Or is that it, Roy? I don't know, but that's a good guess. Roy Opata Olindi. That's great. I feel like they knew that other stuff was going to be so much. They go just give him Roy up top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the Opata Olindi is mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. It's like you're gonna. That's like parents are like. It's not easy, dude. What we're almost, about to do to you. Mm-hmm. So we're going to give you a nice Roy. I almost thought I should have given him O'Roy. You O'Roy. know what I mean? O'Roy. Just keep O'Roy, it going. O'Roy, Opata, O'Lindy. O'Roy. <laughs> Just keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I'm the only person from Kenya who listens to this show. So here's a helpful heads up. There are way more than three animals on this continent that eat meat. <laughs> John Chris said he yeah. went on a safari. There's only three animals out in the, out there that eat meat. Crocodiles, leopards, jackals, African wild dogs, just to name a few. John Chris was not paying attention on the, that safari. Some poor American is going to try to get, pet a baboon and <laughs> lose a limb. 
That's true. That I'll is true. Roy. Yeah. Roy's are, he's are, uh, what are they, uh, on the news? Like our correspondent. Fact, he's our correspondent. Kenyan, Kenyan. Correspondent. Man on the street. Yeah. He's our Kenyan correspondent. Let's go to Roy. We go to Roy in Kenya, and, and then he just. <laughs> my brother's over in Africa right now. Uh, well, you should sure. warn him because if yeah. you watch the John Chris yeah. episode, it'd yeah. be dangerous. It would be. Uh, Cherith, cute story. That's got to be a made up last name. I doubt it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nobody lies when they. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cherith, cute story. Cute story it sounded like they were discuss dissing richard jewell as being a bad example of moral or character character <laughs> richard jewell was falsely accused ultimately he was vindicted but that got so <laughs> vindicated Vindi- vindicated <laughs> <laughs> he was vindicated but that got so little media attention compared to the public beating he took for something he didn't do yeah, i don't know do we say you think, think bad about it i'm a big richard jewell fan yeah i know you're uh i don't it was just kind of in passing john said when i pointed out that Kanye replaced, replaced yeah. John on the speaking, you know, we're all laughing. He's like Richard Jewell. And I don't know what he meant. We all kind of laughed and moved on. But, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's I think it was just, right. a, uh, you know, they made that movie. It's just a funny name. Like, uh, yeah, that it was somebody just else like, from Atlanta that, yeah, yeah. And it's a different, and the joke would be that it's a name that you wouldn't, we're naming big celebrities. Yeah. 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 And it's Richard Jewell. But yeah. I'm a giant Richard Jewell fan. Giant. Mm-hmm. Uh, you watch that movie. It's, Insane. What's the movie? Uh, Richard, Richard Jewell. Jewell. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. It's okay. a great movie. It's right. it's it's Clint the, Eastwood, Atlanta. Right? Yeah, Atlanta. Oh, I love Clint Eastwood. Atlanta uh, bombing, and they oh, okay. and they blamed it on this dude. And this dude. Oh. This dude tried to like save everybody. Yeah. Wow. And the whole media turns against this guy and just ruins this guy's life. Jeez. Yeah. So I'm a yeah giant Richard Jewell fan. Uh, yeah, the FBI was like just throwing it on this. I mean, just insane. John Leese. Dusty could be David Cross's younger brother. People mm. always say that. They I don't say that. younger brother, but they always say I look like David Cross in disguise. Yeah. People I say it all that. the time. Mm. Yeah. I like David Cross. I think yeah. y'all have different talking points. But. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless. Yeah. Very funny in movies, though. I yeah, love yeah. him in movies. Yeah. Arrested Development. Arrested Very Arrested. funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's great. Scary movie, too. <laughs> Yeah, I need to watch those. Are those are pretty good, right? The scary yeah. movie two was really good. Yeah, I don't know about the others. Yeah, that'd be a fun one. Uh, Grace Prizwara. Hello, folks. I saw Brass Band in North Charleston with my friend. All right, we had an absolute ba- blast. One of his openers delivered a punchline a little too quickly, and the audience didn't react. As we slowly caught on, he started making fun of us and our intelligence which did make us laugh. But I thought it felt a little like one of those tricks Nate's talk, Nate talks about and kind of amateur. I wanted to know y'all's feelings on putting it back on the audience when a joke bombs. I, I mean, blame I, the audience every time. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I agree with her. It is one of those kind of tricks we do when you don't laugh and you try to turn it on them just to yeah, get you out of a situation. Yeah, it's never, it's almost always... It's almost always the sign of a joke didn't work. And then the person's just scrambling, just scrambling to not look terrible. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it works. Sometimes you you put it back on the crowd and sometimes the crowd buys into it. And you're like, you keep, I've never done that, but you see people do it. Yeah. 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 I think it's the, it's probably the, it's just really the, what the personality of the comic is. If if you, I would never do it. I like like to blame myself, actually. Yeah. uh, As it's happening. If you're like a Daniel Tosh. Mm Jezelnik type that has an arrogant, confident vibe. Yeah. I feel like that's a fine move. Yeah, they it suits yeah. your persona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan, yeah, Daniel Tosh does it. I mean, so Jezelnik too. But, uh, they do. Daniel Tosh even more so putting it out on the crowd. He does it very, very well. Yeah, and uh, it's very, very funny. Like it's you know it's fun. It's it's so over the top that you don't feel like you're just like fine being the dumb one. Yeah. yeah I mean, is, it could be yeah. something like that. I know a lot of the comics in Charleston. I wish I knew who that was, but I would think that Daniel Tosh probably would tell a joke that the audience wouldn't catch. And then it would be okay to make fun of them. Yes. I, I think most of the time when it happens, that's not the case. It was actually, it was Daniel Tosh. It was. A, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's who opened for. Yeah. 
Yeah. Incredible. Jessel Nick hosted. We figured it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, most of the time, yeah, it's uh, it probably, they've done it that way a million times. Yeah. They know the joke's not going to work. They go ahead and plan the reaction of making fun of the audience. Yeah. There that's we go. what I think. Well, that's, you see stuff like that pop in where you can tell someone has, it's like they've messed the joke up once and then they got out of it in such a funny way that then it just ends up becoming right. That just stays oh, in yeah. there. If now, you ever, if the yeah. joke works, it messes up your whole thing. I've, I've heard yes. you say, if you ever see that on a special, like you said that, if you ever see that on a special, uh, it means that they rehearsed it that way. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That, that joke never Kept quite worked. And you're like, you want to really make sure that it didn't come from you. <laughs> you go, this is Nate. No, Nate I've, said this. I've had that thought. There's yes. people on specials that'll be like, oh, you groaning now, or oh, you don't yeah. laugh, but this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. I must say, it's, it, look, it's you've created an act. So mm -hmm. I'm not, a, I've created an act. They I'm not a big, I'm a, I'm a big act person. I go up there and I do my act. And uh, so I'm fine with creating the act. But yeah, you can tell when it's like, all right, like, you know, it's a, it, it can be over the top. Stuff happens, and you're going to have a thing that happened really funny. Then you do think, well, maybe I'll try to do it everywhere. But uh, yeah, sometimes you're like, it's they, like just do a joke, well, just also, fix the joke. Well, also, it's an opener in Charleston. Maybe they are an amateur, so we can cut them some slack. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe they're just no, going to no, start. I would be. Yeah. No, look, hammer it. You know who chooses the comments? Hammer it. The headliner of that show. Uh, <laughs> and he wanted to put it out there. I say hammer. Oh, oh, so you know who it was. I do. Oh, oh, no, I didn't realize that. <laughs> he asked him to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't listen to this podcast. Um, <laughs> so, I hope it doesn't he's going to listen. Him. He's going to listen when somebody tells him about yeah. this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it, 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 I would imagine he, it was in the moment of, you know, doing it. But I mean, that might be his act. So I don't know. <laughs> no, I, when I when they said I saw a brass band, I'm just now connecting the dots. Yeah, he's the B name. Yeah, I thought they saw a brass band in North Charleston yeah. with a comedian opener. Mm. So I'm uh, glad I yeah. understand now. All yeah. Right. All right. Uh, Eric T. Holman. My wife and I took a week long honeymoon in Mexico, and we when we returned, we started noticing little pictures of Dusty all over our house. Turns out, some friends of ours have a tradition of pranking people while they are on their honeymoon. They hit over 400. We're having a good time. Pictures in our house. So far, we found about 150 and find more every day. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. That's awesome. I mean, it feels like you'll hate me by the time yeah. you're done finding pictures, <laughs> but I love that. I like that tradition. That is. Uh, yeah, that, that's, yeah. You love the tradition of people finding pictures of you? Yeah, I like that these people hid. I also like arenas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that'd be a good prank for you to play on people. Yeah. That's awesome. Just leave pictures of myself. Yeah, I like it. Like mm. a glitter bomb, but just uh, uh, <laughs> pictures of me as you're vacuuming it up. You just see me. It could be funny if you go to someone's house, just always leave a signed headshot and just <laughs> yeah. have it somewhere I like ridiculous. I like that. Just I would see do, how long it takes. I would do that in yeah. comedy condos for a while. Mm -hmm. And I felt like people were making fun of me for it. And I was like, come on, guys. It's a joke. We're making a joke here. Yeah. It's a but good the, bit. The problem about, yeah, the problem about irony is that there's certain people that would uh, would seriously do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They would genuinely do that. <laughs> and you're you're like, I'm the ironic headshot <laughs> yeah. next to the guy that's like, this is the real headshot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's almost like the last joke you're talking about, because there could be people that do it that way, the tricks. Yeah. But maybe he's not. Yeah. So you don't know. I just, if he's yeah. not, then there's nothing wrong with you. Know? Yeah, I like to leave a picture behind in hopes that the next comic in the condo is a fan. And they'll be like, oh, this is nice that he left this. I'll take this home with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Appleton condo or hotel? Uh, hotel. Nice. Did you I, so I left one there for the maid. Smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, really? You no. Know, <laughs> <laughs> I like that move. I'm, gonna, I'm into too. it. I'm into it. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Shakes. I was at the Jerry Seinfeld show in Minneapolis, and he was taking questions from the crowd at the end of the show. Someone asked, who is his favorite comedian right now? And he replied, Nate Bargatze. He also said he wished he was still shooting comedians in cars so he could have Nate on. How about right. that? Wow. Yes. Big time. Nice. Very, very nice. Yeah. I have, uh, I have been talking to Jerry, so that's big news. All right. Big yeah. time. 
And uh, you're going to direct this next special. I'm going to direct it on <laughs> Nate Land. Uh, Nate Land business. We have been texting and talking and uh, a little bit more, and it's pretty crazy. He sent me a very nice uh, message. He watched my last special, and it was uh, very overwhelming. And uh, it's obviously the, the you know, it's, I mean, it's all I've ever wanted was for that dude to uh, – watch and then and we just started talking and uh so yeah it's it's very nice that he said that um he's gonna uh, hopefully i'll see him at he might come to radio city one night i think he, if he can make it which because we Is that have this not met in person that is this weekend mm -hmm. we have not met in person but we've been talking and that's been uh yeah very very special that's awesome it's mm -hmm. very it's extra cool because that's your favorite show you've probably seen more than any right it's i've seen it more than anything yeah he would be my favorite comic i mean it's, you know, I mean, I like so many other comics because once you get into comedy, they're, you're just like, wow, I can't believe there's so many comedians that are so good. And that's, look, that's the thing that we're trying to do with the Nate Land. Like, it's like, that's what when I'm the, like, when I go on the road and there's, uh, you know, I had Gary Veter and Joe Zimmerman this weekend with me. And it's like, that's what this whole show's about to be. And is you see a couple other comics, make two or three other comics, uh, and they go up and you just, you know, just enjoy trying to show you some stuff you can enjoy and then you can go watch Joe's special this weekend and uh have a good time and you know people can get into stand I want people to get into stand up comedy stand up comedy's got to taking a big leap right now and a lot of people do it and I want people to be able to be able to get into it and not be fearful of it just being I don't know too heavy or too not saying everything's going to be right up your alley you got to go into it and I can't predict how you're going to like everything but I can control the, you know, just so it's not too dirty or too, you know, I figured that's being done. And so Absolutely. we can do it this way. And that's what I, and then, you know, be introduced, you know, younger people can get into it too as well. Because, I mean, the other stuff that's dirty, I mean, I have no problem, you know, people do whatever you want to do. My Most of my best friends are the dirtiest comedians. Uh, it's guys I've started with, but, you know, I do this. Brian Regan has a good story about opening for Jerry Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. I think when in the early nineties, maybe or late eighties. Yeah. Uh, but he, uh, some, some lady was caught waving, waving him at the end of the show, waving for Brian to come over. So he came over like, Oh, cool. <laughs> you know, young Brian Regan. Yeah. And, uh, she hands him some panties and she's like, can you give these to Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll thanks. Yeah. I'll pass these along. <laughs> yeah. I think you opened for Jerry for a few years. Yeah, I saw him open for Jerry. Yeah. Really? Oh, I did so too. When was that? How long ago was this? It was the early 2000s. To t pack mm -hmm. oh, I oh, saw it too. Oh, man. Right. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Uh, Joe goes out the uh, Joe Zimmerman. I like that. I just went through that trying to be not dirty. And then you, well, not, did panties. I say did I say anything dirty? Well, I'm just joking. I mean, not really. <laughs> yeah. I, and this is the content that I'm saying. It's it's like this, but it's just funny that it's like as I say that you go. Let me tell you this joke about this <laughs> lady getting a pair of panties. To <laughs> well, you can buy panties at a family store. I didn't know that was that was dirty. It, I, I know, but you understand the you understand the dirtiness of the fact of the handing. I don't know. No. Innocent to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I apologize. I, I'm sorry that I offended everybody. Yeah, because Joe's on. All right. And we're back. Joe's gone. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I just like the timing of it. Is what I, thought. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was funny. It's perfect timing. The timing, he goes, oh, I got a great Brian Regan Seinfeld. Uh, this girl brought her underwear and gave it to Brian. You're like, huh. I mean, I just went on a long. Let me tell you what we won't stand for. Cheap shots. <laughs> Joe, go ahead. <laughs> I got a lot more where that came from. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, and, and Nate supports it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Philip Lawson. This is super random, but I searched all four of you on Tennessee unclaimed property, and Brian's name is the only one that got results. Just thought I'd let him know he might have money to claim. Amazed it wasn't Aaron like the Grill Weber. Yeah, so I looked into this. He... Uh, sent this a few, two or three months ago, and I went on this website, Tennessee Unclaimed Property, and I had a quite a bit of money there waiting for me. So about 15 years ago- Wait, what? How much? Well, I'm, I'm about to tell the story. Wow. Uh, about 15 years ago or so, my, my company 
I should have started by saying so much. It was four thousand dollars. Okay, uh, <laughs> I mean that's a lot. Though. It is yeah. a lot. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but it's not. life changing. Like, yeah. guys, this is the last time you ever see me. <laughs> he's got a gold necklace on right now, and he's got a Rolex, and he's just sitting there. We haven't noticed. He goes, yeah. "Oh yeah, I guess you did come into some money." Yeah. I mean that that is, I'd love to find four grand. But yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it, a, like it I, is kind of the wrong setup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like three point five million. <laughs> yeah, <God>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> life changing money. Anyway, about fifteen years ago or so, our the company I worked for sold to another company, and so our benefits somehow rolled over into this other thing where you could either roll into a 401k or you could get some type of annuity where you get $70 a month or something like that. Now, dumb me thought, oh, I'm, I want to go full-time to stand-up comedy. So that's $70 a month I could really use. Well, somewhere along the way, I moved and the paperwork got messed up and that money, I just never knew what happened to it. And I was so dumb, I couldn't even figure out what happened to it. I just like, I don't know. And every month it was going to my old address and for like five years, six years or whatever. Mm. So I went online, put in a claim for it. They don't easily just give you the money. You got to show a lot of proof. But then they mailed me a check for four thousand dollars. Wow! Thanks to Philip Lawson. Wow! Wow. Philip Philip Lawson Lawson. coming through. What a dude. I wonder if that's one of the most things, uh, someone listening has done for a podcast, like <laughs> directly for the, not besides you listening, but straight up, you just gave me, you gave <laughs> Brian $4,000. Yeah. Philip, Philip if you want to come to one of my shows, I'll get you in half price. Yeah. So, why don't you do a cash only Philip. South Carolina, Alabama search for me, you know, mm-hmm. cause I've lived there too. Maybe I have unclaimed money there somehow those are your rough days though. <laughs> yeah it's true. That is true. <laughs> you owe money <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe he doesn't need to go that's true that does he slay owes this much <laughs> yeah. yeah you that might wake true. a giant sleeping giant there that is true it's like me with sound exchange yeah oh yeah first sound exchange you got i complained about not getting enough and they did ran some paperwork turns out i owed them money (laughs) (laughs) how is that possible because there was another brian bates who was a musician (laughs) and they'd been sending me his money (laughs) that's incredible so all my friends were like getting this amount and i was like i don't think i'm getting enough and i complained to them about it and they're they did brand a check and they're like actually you've been getting too much yeah wow you owe us they owe yeah that's amazing it was that's that's a that's it a was blow. perfect. That's a, that's it a was it was when it happened. It was truly perfect because <laughs> because I think you did get. I thought you finally did get something, and then or some. I was getting yeah. a little bit. Yeah, but obviously I was getting too much. Yeah, I like the idea that the letter might be worded like we did some research and turns out we did find some issues. <laughs> yeah, with how you're getting paid, <laughs> and you're reading it like yes, yes, yeah. I love that. Joe did. Uh, had some stuff. Can you talk about it and all that? Mm. No. Not allowed to yet. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, cliffhanger. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. But man uh, of but mystery. Yeah. How do I I'm trying to think what I can talk about. Uh, <laughs> Just in general. <laughs> <laughs> we got more stuff. <laughs> but uh you searched for some stuff and basically kind of did an unclaimed property kind of thing, but for a lot of the comedians. Yeah. Got some yeah. got some got some money coming to a lot of different comedians. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's about Very all nice say. thing. Yeah, it's all you can say. Uh, but it was very, very, very nice. Thing. Uh, Luke right. Middleton. Hello from Maine. I saw the Natives three upcoming shows in Portland, Maine, <laughs> with not one, but two in the same evening. Uh, I have three. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sure both shows will be great. If you guys were going to see your favorite comedian, you had the choice between the first and the second, which would you choose to go to and why? Uh, I mean, that that's really up to you. It's, uh, honestly, my shows, I mean, everybody's just very nice. And so I, they end up being great shows. It's not like you can say, well, the first one I'm going to do this and the second one I'm not. There could be any reasons you could have one. Because, I mean, there's times you think, all right, well, you know, the first one's first and maybe it's earlier and it's going to be, they're not, they're, the energy is going to be a little bit lower or whatever reason. And then that is the best show. And then the second show can be, well, they're going to be fired up and it's going to be amazing. And then it's like that one cannot be. It, but I mean, overall, 
fortunately, where when you get into these bigger places, the shows all end up being the same. I would say if you were going to a comedy club, a lot of times it's better to go to the earlier show because the one that can be later can end up being a little drunker. And it's also the person you're going to see mm-hmm. where the crowd could be a little more rowdier, a little drunker, a little more problems. Or Yeah, there's really no way to know because I find even at those shows, uh, for me, where the crowd might be a little more rowdier, that can be the more interesting show, right? You, you might get yes. my best jokes and my my best act in the early show but the late show you're going to get weirder stuff where things just happen and the more in the moment stuff is funny yes yeah the early show you can get on in there and get your seat you don't have to wait outside for the mm, that's a first show. yeah yeah that's Ooh. the thing that's yeah although yeah. more traffic on the early show but on the first show <laughs> comics got to keep it to a certain time because there is a second show where the second mm. show he could go a little longer mm-hmm. if he's so that's, true. that's true that is true Nate does 58 minutes every show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't do. I'm a, I do my act. Yeah. By the book. Yeah. By the book. Like a 60 minute show. Uh, yeah. So that's what I do. But, but I mean, yeah, yeah all the shows, are, I mean, all the shows are great. I don't think, I don't think for a Nate show that the time is better because you did a 3 PM in Salt Lake city. That was just as good. Mm-hmm. A 3 PM. 3 PM. Just as good. But yeah. Salt Lake city is great. I it love is. it there. It is. You want to tell us about Delete Me? Delete Me. Guys, we're excited to tell you about our new sponsor, Delete Me. Uh, Laura and I have been using this service personally for a few years now, uh, for a few years now. And we are glad to partner with them. Like we've had it signed up forever. It's a, you know, because the internet's crazy and uh, this is your data is probably available for everyone who's ready to pay for it, which it worked out for this guy, but usually it doesn't. What do you mean? Well, because your data is available everywhere. You just got $4,000 because anybody could look that up. Well, he just, oh, like That's emailing everything. This. Yeah, I don't. He I, just emailed me and said, yeah. hey, I found this on this website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are companies called data brokers that collect huge amounts of your personal identifiable information, name, address, phone number, and social security number. Uh, and they, and I mean, it just gets put out everywhere which is crazy. And you can delete me. The goal of it is you kind of just, or you kind of wipe you from the internet. So not everybody can find all this stuff. There was like, people could find your number. People could find your, there's just so much stuff people can find. And so the idea of delete me, which is great is it's not saying it's finding everything because it's the internet and it's great, but it is constantly searching to the goal of being where you're just cannot be found. And, you know, a lot, I mean, just for outside of like, you got identity threat theft, which is the big one or scams, but the spam calls, the emails, dude, I get so much just garbage emails or the spam calls. And, uh, I don't get as much as anymore because we've been using this, but it's, there've been, it's just, you know, you just want to get all your stuff off to be like, so you're just not constantly be attacked. By that kind of stuff. Uh, their software and team of experts will not just find or remove your personal information from hundreds of data broker websites, but they keep scanning for new data and get that removed as well. That's the great image. Just keep searching. So if something new pops out, because you're just constantly people trying to get that stuff. It's super easy to use and it works. We love it. They offer a special discount for our listeners. Get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to join deleteme.com slash Nate and use promo code Nate. The only way to get 20% off is to go to join deleteme.com slash Nate and enter promo code Nate at checkout. That is join deleteme.com slash Nate promo code Nate. And we, yeah, and we've been using, I mean, like on, we used it, uh, years before we started this podcast. I mean, we, Laura signed up for it and uh has used it for a while so we are uh we love it so I've, there you go i've been trying so hard for people to f- find me i'm worried that yeah <laughs> yeah they'll never he's the opposite yeah find yeah. me yeah yeah i just signed up for findme.com findme.com <laughs> <laughs> and uh ai ai is already stealing people's voices and scamming and calling people like oh the, the ai will already call your mom your mom with your voice Oh, really? Be like, can you send me a check? I need money. And your mom will be like, you need money? Yeah. <laughs> and then, but it'll be from some random number. But people are obviously falling for it because it's the voice of a loved one. Sure. Yeah. And so that's that's going to get real bad. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, so, that's yeah, crazy. Don't anyway, be sending money. If you get a call yeah. from an unknown number and it's your loved one, it's probably probably not a loved one if they're asking for money. Have they really already done that? The voices are already imitating exact people's voices and, wow. and calling loved ones. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. So it's like my voice and I go, Mom, I need money. Mom, I'm I'm in a jam here in uh in uh Saudi or, or no, I'm in a jam here in uh somewhere in Africa. Can you can you money gram me? They play the two thousand dollars. Mom and dad, yeah. please send money. I'm so broke. It's always yeah. a it's always a wire. <laughs> yeah. It's always wire or money gram. Yeah. Or or maybe PayPal, Venmo. Yeah. But I mean what if my mom's like, Well, when did you go to Africa? Exactly. So then I'm here so, with Derek. So then, yeah. so then most people will be like, <laughs> we'll text your real number and be like, Nate, are you okay? And you'll be like, yeah. And they'll know it's a scam. Yeah. But if they don't do that, then they'll be Well, scammed. yeah. And that, yeah. And they, you know, and they could, cause they could just get, they're probably not going a mom and a, you know, they're going to figure it out where they don't do a mom and a son, but they do uh aunt and a, you know. They're calling a lot of grandparents. Yeah. Yeah. With, yeah. A, with a grandson needing help. Yeah. That's so, man, it's insane. Yeah. That's, that's insane stuff. And that's what we plan on doing in Nate Land Company. <laughs> a lot of money in it. We're going to call you. A lot of money There's there. a ton of money in it. We're going to call you grandparents and uh, sell them clean comedy over the phone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> If you uh, double the price, you can hear Joe's underwear stories. <laughs> <laughs> this week. This week. Well, Monday is Columbus Day. Mm. If you guys knew that or not. So I thought, let's talk about some explorers. All right. Love that. You guys know anything about Christopher Columbus or any other Sell explorer? the ocean blue. Yeah. 1492, right? Yeah. Mm. That's about all I know. Pretty problematic. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty problematic if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, Columbus I, was. Yeah. Yeah. We grew up believing that he discovered America and now we're everybody says we should hate him. So I'm yeah. I'm conflicted on him. Well, he was trying to find India, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he kind of missed. Mm-hmm. Big miss. Yeah, he wasn't trying to discover a new country. He was trying to find a Western trade route to India because Yeah, but I mean, this is what are you gonna do? It's a better, so, dis- er, it's a better I, I don't discovery. know why. Uh, yeah. So why are people mad at it? I'm just sharing oh. facts about it. I'm not saying right or wrong. Yeah. You're just talking about because Native Americans, right? And no, I was just I was just trying to chime in. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, he's got a lot of he's getting a lot of guff. He's getting a lot of guff for Columbus Day and now it's what? Indigenous People's Day. Yeah. That's what you meant though, right? About problematic? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cause you do did you discover America or did people discover it five yes. five thousand years earlier? Yeah. That's all. Yes. Also Vikings apparently got here. Yeah, you're Joe. You're killing all my notes here. Can I'll, you just back I'll, off I'll a little? I'll back off. I'll back yeah. off. I mean, we're Joe, done basically. Yeah. yeah, that was it. <laughs> That's all I knew. That's the only explorer I knew. So I was like, I got to get so it. So this in week yeah. I'll be at uh, <laughs> yeah, at I know, two more yeah. I know nothing about any explorers. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you're right. Uh, Leif Erikson, the Viking, uh, I guess explorer. Leif. Yeah, Leif Erikson. It's not a bad first name. Yeah, I like it. I could see that coming back. You know, they got, yeah. I mean, I feel like what was there? Uh, there was a Leaf something that played football somewhere, right? No, Ryan Leaf. Ryan Leaf. Ryan Leaf. <laughs> but there's a Leaf. Isn't there an actor or something named Leaf? Leaf Garrett? Maybe. Leaf Garrett sounds familiar. Levi Garrett is chewing tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> there's River Phoenix. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting somewhere now. Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All the That's great explorers. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, Leaf is, I like Leaf. Yeah, it's a good name. Mm-hmm. Just, I like that too. Leif Erickson is the Viking. Mm-hmm. Leif, like you need to a, leave. Like a wrestler. I bet that's hard though. Yeah. If you're a Leaf and just constantly getting asked to ask to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <And> just. <laughs> or maybe you're like, they're like, please stay. You're like, I got to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Leaf's got to leave. Leaf's got to leave. <laughs> Leaf, don't leave. Please leave. <laughs> they just say that because they know he can't even, you know, you're asking him to leave. Yeah. There's no Leaf hates the autumn. Do you know Leaf's, oh, yeah. Leaf's father's yes. name? Tree. <laughs> That's a good guess. But from our names episode, could you guess what Leaf's father's name would be? Uh, oh, ground. Oak. Oak. Dirt. Do you remember his last name? Erickson. Erickson. Oh, Eric. Eric. Yeah. Oh, it's oh. Eric's son. Yeah. Yes. Whoa. What was, so, yeah. what was Eric's last name? <laughs> uh, son. His yeah. dad's name was Son. <laughs> yeah. So it just keeps going. Okay. Interesting. And then his his dad's name was just an S. And then it was just, they yelled at each other. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
and I noises. Like Interesting. Yeah. I like that history. Well, he did. They think he Zimmerman, like your oh. Zimmer. Oh, yeah. It would have been your your dad's name is Zimmer, correct? And then <laughs> he <laughs> was a man. He was a man. <laughs> and true. that's how you got to Joe. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Bargazzi. Your dad's name is Barge. Barge. Because <laughs> his grandpa drove, yeah. a, drove a tugboat. Ours stands for like the bar barkeeper. Oh. His name comes from that. Like it's, we were the first house at the gate. Yeah, or bar gate or something. Bar gate. Like we were the first like trying to kind of be there like, no, you, you can't come in. And then they asked us to leave. We were the, the original closest, gatekeepers. The original gatekeepers of... Oh, not now like, a bit of a gatekeeper like itself of the Nate Land Company. We didn't own it. Not like slinging beers when you said barkeep. No, it's like it was. It was that. Like I think we just were. I don't. It's not come. It doesn't come from. We're just the ones that get shot first when the people come in the <laughs> gate. But we're there to. We we live the closest to the gate, and okay. it's like kind of like no, 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 barely no. in the town. We're That's barely like, in the town. Oh, yeah. I get it. Yeah, man. you're the front lines. Front lines, nice. and they're fine with just moving those lines back and then now we're <laughs> now we're the first outside the gate yeah go ahead take a step yeah we're near the gate out gates eh? yeah <laughs> out gates eh? yeah out gates eh? <laughs> yeah we're always but we're near that gate we don't get far from the gate <laughs> in or out well anyway leaf er- erickson's day is also october 9th which i think is this coming monday it didn't get mentioned as much as columbus day but i wonder why not a, not as cool a ring to it, I think. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of cities named after Leif Erikson. Mm-hmm. Not many of, Vikings left either. Yeah, you got a lot of Columbuses. I'm yeah. afraid to ask what slay meant, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I think we were... I well, think you were the one charging the gates. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, Columbus. So he... Uh, to get from Europe to india or china you had to go all the way down around africa so they said instead of going east let's see if we go west and see if we could get there quicker and they didn't realize how big the world was so he sailed and it took him like six years to convince somebody to let him even do it to fund it he finally convinced spain he was from italy but spain funded him and then man how you get that money from the king and queen i know you got to go get it from Spain? Was he in Spain? Yeah, I think he went to a few countries and hit them I up. Mean, angel investors. Angel yeah. investors. Yeah. But I mean, back then, you got to go, how do you even ask Spain for the money? Like, you got to take a, what, a four-year boat ride? <laughs> yeah. And go to Spain? Well, and what did Spain get in return? <laughs> well, they got the land. I mean, that was... What land? Did they? Oh, oh, like oh El Spain. South, of, South, South America. America. They got Spain. Yeah. Well, they got uh, <laughs> well, they uh, Mexico and they, <laughs> yeah, but Columbus got to America and the English got America, so it sounds like it didn't work right. <laughs> well, he didn't even make it to the mainland. We're trying to, Bates was back; uh, he was alive during this time. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember from watching yeah, the news. Yeah, <laughs> he just got to like um, where Haiti is and uh, the Bahamas and El Salvador and places like that, and. He thought again it was India, so he called it. That's why people they're called Indians because he thought he arrived in India. The whole, he never ever knew that he found a new world. He never knew that. I don't think so. Did he get oh, killed? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> did, did he get killed? <laughs> or he died? No, I guess he just died. Yeah. <laughs> I don't guess yeah, he got I mean, killed. I didn't know. I mean, I know he's not alive today. But yeah, yeah. I mean, did he so get many explorers killed? got killed by Native Americans. I forgot. I think he maybe just he died. Didn't, he didn't get killed by Native Americans. Yeah, at first I thought he did because Magellan did. I'm getting confused. He was just trying to make a map. He was just trying to find a spice tray to the West Indies. Do you know what continent's named after a person? Yeah. Uh, Oh, Asia. I do. I think. America, named after Amerigo Vespucci? Yeah. Very good. Yes. What is Joe is Joe is killing it. Joe went to college. He comes his dad's yeah, his dad's a professor. Yeah, is that true? Yeah. My I did go to college. It's true. Yeah. Your dad's a professor? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of history? He teaches writing. Yeah. English. Oh. Writing. Joe comes yeah, it's old money. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. Deep pockets. Yeah. A lot of money. Professor James Madison University. That's where the money is. Yeah. That's where the money is. It's a fun school. It's a smart school. 
My grandpa was a professor as well. Yeah. So yeah. Of writing? Engineering. Ooh, but he are, lived in India, so it comes all full Are circle. they disappointed with the route you've taken? Because uh, you went west, like yeah. Columbus. <laughs> Uh, no, my dad would have been, ha- no, my dad's happy. He would have, he would have been supportive of whatever I did. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sweet dad. Yeah. Good dad. Good dad. And you still write. I do love to write. Yeah. So I did inherit that from him. It only took him 10 weeks. Not as long as you might think. I mean, it's a to long get time. from where? From Europe to America or to the Bahamas. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have thought it would have been many months. Yeah. I mean, that's two months. That's a two, two and, and a half. two and a half months. So yeah. that's not bad though. It's not crazy, but it's it's like it's a you lot. sure you want to do this? Yeah. But I mean, so he goes over there, asks for the money, and then he's like, I need you know, they're like, Let me think about it. He's like, Why well, you gotta live on here a, till they on a climate friendly ship? Th- three ships powered. Yeah. Do you know the names of the ships? The Nina, the Pita, the Santa Maria. Man, you guys are yeah. pros. Yeah. Like, was Nina. that Columbus's ships? That was yeah. Columbus. Oh, okay. Before what I was forget. the Mayflower. <laughs> As the pilgrims. The, the Mayflower is the Mayflower. Pilgrims, but, no, right? no, but when did they come? Uh, 60s. 16. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 60s. Before I forget, you had a, Nate had a pretty good America joke in Australia that I haven't heard you keep doing. Pretty solid. What was it? When you say, in Australia, you say I'm from America. Oh, oh yeah, I need to do that. That's a good joke. Yeah. That, I would say, when you tell someone, it's, it does, it's funny to like say America. Because when you America. go to another country and they go, where are you from? I go, I'm from America. <laughs> yeah. And it yeah. just sounds so aggressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you don't, I don't know what to say. Like, I mean, they say the States and yeah, someone's like, I'm from the States. Say, yeah. And so that is a little bit easier, but it was like, I just like walking around going to everything. Like, oh, where are you from? America. <laughs> <laughs> and then you say, you tagged it up with and you're like you know, you know which one i'm talking yeah. about oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 yes oh yeah that's yeah that is a good joke yeah i'm from america they don't ever go which one they know yeah 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 north or south <laughs> yeah no one from south america goes i'm from america <laughs> they get right. yeah that's true yeah so and canada doesn't do it either they're from north america yeah yeah no we make them do their but we're the ones that go yeah. you know what's up yeah <laughs> you know where i'm from yeah we took the whole thing Mm-hmm. There's North America, South America, but we're like, we're the United States of America. Yeah. America. yeah. Technically mm-hmm. a Peruvian guy's from America. Well, Chilean yeah. guy. He knows how to bring the fun <laughs> out of it. That's what Joe does. I was like, I, I don't know what He's you're a saying. squasher of a good time. Go <laughs> yeah. ahead, Joe. Bring it, bring it back down. <laughs> a guy from Peru. That's all I'm saying. It's a country. You were like, technically, a Peruvian guy's from America. And I'm like, what does that mean? Is Peru yeah, in mean? America? Is Peru Peru's a state? in South America, right next to oh. Brazil. Oh, that's the, what we named it after. <laughs> <laughs> what, what we named what? America. The guy. <laughs> we named it after America Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> Amerigo Vespucci. America's Vespucci. I like that though. America Stevenson. Stevenson. I like that. His dad's name was Steven. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who's your son? My son's America. He's the one they named it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't think any of you knew Peru is a country. <laughs> well, the I way you I said knew, it, you're Peru like a Peruvian a guy's from America. And I'm like, I don't know what he's saying. I was yeah. trying to follow the same point y'all were making. Yeah, but you. <laughs> Don't bring your college stuff. Too in much, here. yeah. Too much <laughs> that's a, knowledge. That's a good point. <laughs> he he went to MTSU, but that was in the seventies. We had Discover Peru, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, he hasn't learned about your <laughs> history. <laughs> MTSU, yeah, Montana State University. Yeah, that's where he went. <laughs> yeah, he looks like a guy that travels a lot, Brian. Uh, that would move that far from his home. Mm. Uh, Middle Tennessee you, State. Oh, okay. oh I was about to give good you the college. Tennessee. We played them in college golf. Wow. Nice, nice work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, anyway, it was named after Amerigo Vespucci instead of Columbus because Columbus didn't know what he discovered. And this guy was the first one that realized this is in India. And then there was a map maker who was, they're called cartographers, I think. Uh, and he made a map and he wrote where that land was America. And from then on, it was called America. I love that Columbus just got some cities. He's credited with discovering the whole thing, and he just got some cities in Georgia yeah. and Ohio. Yeah. Probably some more. 
Yeah. Columbus, Ohio is very known. I Solid. like it a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Solid city. If when the map people, but they would just like kind of be drawing it as as it goes. Mm hmm Yeah. I don't believe the map people. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't believe that you're able to be like, no, nah, this is how it looks. <laughs> yeah. Like even now. It's a that's a good, idea. Even now, that's yeah. a good conspiracy. I like that. I was about I to say yeah. it's amazing how well they do, but you're making a point, well, they don't. <laughs> They're just like, Yeah, this is the shape of it. And we go, Well, we don't have a we can't show you're wrong. So But then satellite image show that it's that? Well, well. Oh, yeah. uh, but <laughs> airplanes could fly over. Yeah, but how high? Can you look down on Florida from yeah. way up and be like, Oh, that's the shape? Yeah. I think <laughs> when you drive down Florida, it feels like that shape. It does feel like it. Yeah. I think there's also professionals that surveil stuff. They have those little surveil right. things. Surveyors? Survey. Thank you. Yeah. Do yeah. you not know how to say that word? And they use those little triangle things to figure surveil. out all the all the lines, but I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's amazing they figure out how to do it, but But I mean but a map guy a long time ago, what's he doing? I mean, I guess he comes they come back with information and he just takes what he's learned and puts it. Do they just he say he's just in a boat? Just rides along the land, and he just goes <laughs> and holds a straight line, and then he's like, "Dip, <laughs> back up," and then I mean, it's just a slow. Yeah, I mean, drawing a map back then, I mean, that is some real work. Yeah, yeah. you just measuring along the whole way. I mean, but I bet when you're doing it back then, you also know no one knows. Yeah, that's true. And so you're just yeah. doing a little like. Probably. You I want to go to lunch. Yeah. I'll do this in five minutes. Yeah. You could probably find some old maps that were very phoned in. Well, they were. Oh, yeah. The one that has America first written on it, you can see an image of it. I mean, they weren't even close to what it looked like, but yeah. Um, just yeah. a circle. I'm <laughs> just guessing. I would just do a circle. He just goes, <laughs> yeah. He goes, wow, it's circular. He goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whip around it. He goes, you know, give or, you know, give or take, but. Just do a couple, like, draw like a Pac-Man. Yeah, basically, it's all, everything's a circle. Yeah, There's you some draw. stuff off of it. But. Do draw Pac-Man. Yeah. <laughs> then you'd be like, wow. So it's like an island. It's a big island. Turtle and island. Then, That's what some people say the earth is. Turtle island. I think so. What? The old, old, old stuff they would call, what do they call it? No, they called America Turtle Island. What does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? I don't know. Have you not heard that? No. I'm guessing not, right? Mm -mm. I don't know if we look at the same internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, let's see. Uh, yeah, Turtle Island, indigenous North America folklore. Hmm. Huh. That's just what they called it. Yeah, Turtle Island is a name for Earth or North America used by <laughs> some indigenous peoples. Yeah, but why? We got to get the next sentence. Oh, okay. Well, I usually well, just do headlines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we read enough, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway. I mean, I think it fits in with what we're talking about here. I mean. Because we look like a turtle. Yeah. Turtle. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. You can look it up on your own time, really. But Yeah. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't crazy here. And I did hear that. Yeah. Turtle Island. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think this is pretty amazing, too. In 1503, he got Columbus and his men got stranded in Jamaica. And the natives refused to after a while to keep feeding them and helping them out. Columbus had a book of astronomy that showed when the next eclipse was about to be, it was about to happen. So he told them that their, uh, his God was mad at them for not helping them. And the moon was going to get blacked out. And then of course the eclipse happened and they all freaked out and they're like, here, take whatever you want. Just mm, don't. Wow. He said that to, to the Jamaicans yeah. or whatever they were called then. Mm -hmm. That's a power move. Was he a Taurus? I wonder. <laughs> It's a low blow. Mm. But it's amazing even 1500s, they knew when an eclipse was going to happen. I'm amazed they figured out how to communicate different languages to each other. I learned that when the uh, pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock, one of the first Native Americans that greeted them, greeted them in English. You know what? May 20th. He is a Taurus. Oh, really? That's a, oh, no, that's, that's when crazy. he died. I'm Isn't sorry. that crazy? Uh, that's crazy. And asked for a beer. Wow. That is. That is oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. How would they even... I guess there's like culture, you know. Well, the the uh, the pilgrims came over in like the 1600s. He was born. They don't even know when he was born. Yeah, roundabout. Roundabout August 25th and October 31st. Imagine they know his day died, 
but well, he was popular then. Yeah, at fifty four. But when they go to his, well, when were you born? And they're like, I don't know. We we'll give you like a month. <laughs> yeah, like we don't know exactly. Yeah, maybe they didn't do birthdays. I appreciate them being honest. Who Wikipedia? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's nice of them. <laughs> uh, so I mean, it was a long time ago. Uh, we talked about this before. He, uh, they, th- they thought mermaids were real, and uh, Columbus thought he'd saw some, but they were actually manatees. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so, were- yeah, there is conspiracy around that. They, yeah, I like, call them sirens. You know, like where the pe- they, 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 like people at sea for so long would think that they would see these women in the water, these really attractive women, and they would like be calling to them. So men would dive overboard to go, and then they would just eat them up. Yeah, they had to tie them to a pole or whatever to keep them from jumping in. The yeah. manatees? Well, whatever, I mean, whatever it, was it was in there, yeah. Oh, like they were just losing their mind out on the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, two and a half months of just, yeah, you know, I mean, just a brutal. Whales make some crazy sounds. I just learned that they used to think whale clicking and... The whale songs were ghosts. They they were super freaked out by whales. Mm, I can I see can that. See, yeah. Underneath, do you hear them above water? Yeah. Apparently, they're making sounds w- way below. And there's a there's one. I think it's a sperm whale does a clicking, but then the other whales, you know, they do their songs, and they didn't know what they didn't know those were whales. They thought it was ghosts in the sea. I mean, yeah. imagine being on a ship with no engine. It's all wind. Yeah. The middle of the night, just darkness you all hear around. Everything. Oh, man, that'd be terrifying. Yeah. And you hear everything. Yeah. Like in, uh, in Castaway, Tom Hanks was out at sea and there was a whale making Oh, okay. I've not seen it in a long time. Well, that whale comes up and breathes. Mm-hmm. But it, it was making sounds and then eventually yeah. he thinks it's still the whale. The movie makes you think it's still the whale, but it was a ship that was blowing oh. a horn. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean the ocean blew, kind of blew that whole. I'm just no waiting on somebody. Watch Castaway. Oh yeah, great, great movie. Volleyball. Yeah. You just told the main thing. Good volleyball. <laughs> yeah, movie. that is the main thing. That is the main thing. I wasn't listening, so I'm still good. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, Ponce de Leon. I hope I'm saying that right. He was searching for the fountain of youth. He's he was told there was a fountain that you, if you could find, you could dip in it and and be young, I guess, forever. And he thought it was in Florida. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's and, where you go to be old forever. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh. Oh. oh uh, yeah. I we got do, you. We I do fist you. bumps yeah, around here, Joe. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. So he searched all over Florida, uh, supposedly in St. Augustine, Florida. That's where they say it is now. Yeah. People still go there now. Well, in St. Yeah. Augustine, they have a Fountain of Youth archaeological park. And they say because they think that's where the legend is that it it was at but no one's ever found it do you ever see the movie cocoon <laughs> you remember that uh, yeah no i do remember um, the movie i've not seen oh it. that's about you know they have these alien pods and they put them in the swimming pool and so it's at a retirement home and when the old people swim in the pool it makes them young again they're starting to like not physically young but they start to be vibrant it's a great yeah. movie yeah I don't want to give it away, but it's a oh, good movie. I'm gonna go yeah. watch that. I'm gonna go watch that tonight. That's that was like great. a famous. Yeah, yeah Wil- Wilford a- Brimley's in it. That yeah. was his big movie. Yeah, yeah. And I talk about the Wilford Brimley cocoon line, which is he was much younger in that movie than he actually looked. Oh yeah. And now there's a whole thing where to see if you've crossed it. I think I'm the only one at this table that's crossed it, but you're not far from it. What was it? He was like 49 or whatever when yeah. he made that movie or something. Yeah. Maybe not that young, but but um, he was a lot younger than you would think playing an old man in the movie so yeah. now every time it started off with like celebrities but anybody that crosses the wolford brimley cocoon line you can go on the on there and he was 50 years old in cocoon uh, and he looked like this he looked like that yeah wow but he looked like that 20 years later too yeah how did he look like that a lot of sun a lot of smoking i think he had diabetes Hmm. He's famous for saying it like that. Diabetes. Yeah. He's diabetes. the only one that says it. There's a commercial that I found the other day. Yeah, I got so, the diabetes. Where, where like, it's the same commercial. One guy's saying diabetes. He's saying diabetes. Same, same yeah. commercial. Yeah. <laughs> diabetes. That's that diabetes sounds like it's unfortunate you got it. 
he got like bit by something. Mm-hmm. Diabetes sounds, you know. Yeah, I worry about that stuff. But oh, all right. Um, he died. Yeah, just recently. Oh, really? I mean, last couple twenty twenty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know what I do? Zocdoc. Oh yeah. You can now find and book in person or telemedicine appointments for medical or dental care. Mm. That's helpful for people that are on the go like us or work different hours like we do. You ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and you ask everyone you know for recommendations? Dusty? Yeah, e- every day. Yeah. I, I use ZocDoc. Oh, yeah? Chairman, yeah. 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 Oh. I really do. I'm for it. Oh, yeah, it wow. works. It works. It's a great experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got a testimony here. I found my family doctor that way and I found my therapist that way. I know Nate doesn't believe in therapy, but. Right. No, I, I, you should talk. I'm after I better help after being with you all week. I'm going to talk yeah. to somebody. Okay, good. Zocdoc. <laughs> yeah, Zocdoc. You can find one in yeah. network. They also show you all the people in network. Sorry. What, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> like an insurance in, oh. your, in your insurance network. It's easy to find. All right. Well, it's, a, it's a free <laughs> app where you can find and book appointments online. <laughs> Book appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. <laughs> you can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. <laughs> and they were, what family doctor are you find? Dude, so a, dude a dude in Queens. By family doctor, I mean a regular doctor. Oh, okay. Whatever you, you, what do you call them? Internist? <laughs> no, no, right. You just call them a doctor. You just there's a word for them though. Yeah, I'm just you. I mean, your um, general practice. Thank you. Yeah, like yeah. That. General, general, practice, yeah, yeah. general practitioner. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. primary care. Primary, primary care. care. That's yeah. what I was looking yeah. for. That's yeah, what I was looking for. yeah, we'll yeah. get it. Yeah. Well, once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. Go to zocdoc.com/nate and download the Zocdoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That is z o c d o c dot com slash nate zocdoc dot com slash nate yeah point is all that confusion zocdoc will clear that up yes all that we just <laughs> went through zocdoc yeah it's makes hard it easy. it's hard to find if you ever try to find yeah. a doctor in network good luck like it's hard to find a doctor in network it's confusing yeah it's weird when they don't accept your insurance it's like why not mm-hmm. it's like why not why are you not taking this kind Mm-hmm. It's almost like there's something wrong with our whole healthcare system. <laughs> I agree. Mm-hmm. I I do agree. But Zocdoc takes care of that for yeah. you. Mm. Just trying to help. Yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> no, it is good. It is good to use it. Uh, Magellan was the first explorer to go all the way around the world. He, uh, or at least his men did. He got killed in the Philippines. He got close, <laughs> but uh, he was almost there. But how did he get killed? Just fighting with the natives. I think he was trying to convert them to Christianity and they didn't like it. And they got in a fight and killed him. Mm. Most of his men did not make it, but it sounds like a hoax to me. 18 of them made it. (laughs) Well, I don't know, but, uh, but he made it. I mean, the Straits of Magellan, which, um, in South America, you can go through the separates Atlantic ocean and Pacific ocean named after him. He named the Pacific ocean. He called it Pacifico, which means peaceful. Hmm. I wonder if he would change his mind after the way it ended. But can you imagine sailing all the way around the world and then finally making it and your friends are still looking the other way for you and then you come back around and surprise them? I mean, that's a that's a pretty amazing thing. Wait, that's what he did? Well, his people went all the way around the world. Yeah. So they started going one way and then came around the other way. Yeah. Um, it's just, just think about it. They never done that before. Just yeah, you don't even know for sure. And so Magellan was trying to do that. Yeah, and then he didn't make it. He almost got all the way, yeah. but his men, his crew, did. Yeah. Some of them did make it. Yeah, first first crew. Yeah, like they it. left New York and then came back to California. Uh, like that. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Not here. I'm saying, but that's what we, I'm doing. I'm from America, mm-hmm. so. I'm using my, I'm using America. Like you left New York and went like East and then come back around and stop. If you went to go travel the world, you would get a boat from New York and then you would land back in California and you go in a circle. Okay. Yeah. Is that not the same thing? Yeah. I mean, he went the other direction, but, and stop, I think he got right back to the stop to the city he started in, but, but yeah. Well, that would be. I feel like you live in a real thin country. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. know he's coming in from the other way. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you lived, if you go, 
you know, if you were a real dead end left, right. All right. He's leaving left. Mm -hmm. And then he comes in right to the same city. Dusty as a flat earther. How do you feel about it? Well, I never claim that. Uh, I talk about things, but, and people make assumptions about me, but uh, I never claim that. But all it is, is there's magnetic north and then you just travel east and you just go, you make your way in a circle. If you believe that sort of thing, yeah, you would just it. make your way around in a circle. So you're still going east because there's magnetic north in the center. So north would still be towards the center, mm -hmm. and then you would just go east. You would follow your 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 compass, or, or compass, compass, as you guys say. He says compass. Compass. You would yeah. follow that east, and it would take you in a complete circle. So if it, so if you don't, but so you've heard about it, but so if it's flat, then what do those people believe? All the other planets are. Uh, well, there's you know they're stars, they're wandering stars, because space is not real. Okay. <laughs> but but how hypothetical I mean, but how do you believe how do you believe it's not real if, if you're looking at it well you just look up at a canopy of stars yeah you're not you, you know movies has made you believe that there's space out there and, <laughs> and no i can see it though you can see a sheet uh with <laughs> lights coming at you <laughs> you believe that you could soar through there in a in a spaceship, and ships have soared through there. They as they, <laughs> so called. Yeah, I mean, I mean, have you seen moon landing footage? I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, I've seen Mars landing footage and Voyager sailing out yeah. to the outer edges of our solar system. There's footage of that. Well, there's yeah, there's stuff out there. I mean, I'll <laughs> give you that. There is some stuff out there, <laughs> and I and I and it is believable. I get it. I mean, it is hard to look at it and go. But I'm not saying I believe those things. I'm just saying, just saying. this is. I'm taking a point of view here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to have fun. Yeah, I'm not. You know, people love to say I believe the Earth is flat. I'm just saying, hey, I'm just pointing out some stuff. Mm -hmm. that's you know that hypothetically if you believed is maybe what you would say yeah i mean well that would be the explanation okay. for traveling circle and then like s as far as space goes it's like you know people always say find me a you know something of space that's not from nasa you know and it's like well you'd have to go to the asia astronauts or the russian astronauts yeah so, you know, you trust who you want to trust. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, they, uh, if they... you trust Russia, I mean, that's on you. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, I trust NASA. Yeah. Which is not Russia. Right. But it's like, <laughs> can you find, you know, it's like, why don't they let us, you know, just explore space on our own? Because we don't have the means. <laughs> well, me and I, don't you, mean, I don't mean me and you, but there's people that do. Well, yeah. And Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. Yeah, but They're Jeff Bezos launched, it launched a ship and mm -hmm. it went real high and then it came down and they got out and everybody went, oh, you did it. But they didn't really. These are the anything. new explorers. Yeah. The modern did. day explorers. Mm -hmm. And That's they're true. trying. You know what I mean? They're putting a good, good effort out there. You can only go as high as the net will let you. Richard, exactly. <laughs> Richard, Richard Branson's the third one, right? They're building spaceships. Yeah. And I hope they do it. I really do. Y you know, but. You know, we already have. We all know that. This is just a bit. Yeah. Okay. We're just having a good time here. Yeah. Uh, did, I'm having a great time. Did you guys know they just discovered an eighth continent? Really? This just happened. Wow. Yeah. So there was a guy named Abel Tasman. He was a Dutch explorer, and he discovered New Zealand and Tasmania. Tasmania was named after him. Um, and he had heard about this continent that was an eighth continent was down there and he traveled there and all you could find was the islands of New Zealand and Tasmania. turns out it was all 95% of it was underwater. And they just found recently like, uh, that the, this continent's underwater. It's called Zealandia. Oh, next to Australia. And, um, does it count? It counts. Does it count if it's underwater? I don't know if, uh, I think the whole point of a continent is above water. That's just my, is opinion. this Atlantis? Well, some people think it may be what they thought was Atlantis. Um, oh, that's exciting. But um, New Zealand is about the only part that's actually sticking out from under, underwater. But they just mapped this like recently. And um, so I don't know if it's going to go in the textbooks as a eighth continent, but. So, oh, so if you've been in New Zealand, does that count as a new continent? I guess it does. Congratulations, yeah, guys. We did two continents. We did two continents. Nice work. I yeah. wish we could have. We've been to the eighth continent. 
Whoa, not many people can say no, that. No, no. Not many people even know about That's it. big time. I think we should uh, have voted on the name of this, though. Zealandia? Yeah, I don't like that. That's not a fun continent name. Mm. Yeah. Is it, it from could, New Zealand? It yeah, it could grow on me. Well, imagine if you're New Zealand, and then now it's like everybody's just talking about Zealandia, and you're like, all right, dude, we were, right, we're, we're actually living here. Yeah, we've been here the whole time. New Zealand, you are out there. When, you, when you're there, it feels like you're... In a different world. See, this is what I'm saying. Just, Let's put yeah. our energy into this. Let's build underwater city on top of Zealandia. Oh, okay. On top of this land. Who, That's what I'm all about. Which country gets to build it? I would think New Zealand. I like yeah. it. We'll get some funding from around the An world. An underwater city. Yeah. Instead of going to space. Yes. Yeah. Underwater. Let's explore the ocean. I agree. We should be living in the ocean before we should be living in space. You're saying mm -hmm. that, you know, you saw them land on Mars, but yet we can't even explore all the oceans. Yeah. It's like, okay. let's dig around our own home here I before trying be. to venture out. Yeah. Elon Musk should be putting his money into the bottom yeah. of the ocean. We're, yeah. Richard Branson. Like, let's see what's going on down Because there. no matter what, we're scared of our land falling apart, but mm -hmm. the water. Right. Be, uh, they're also afraid of the water falling apart. Where's it going to go? They're afraid of the water being polluted. Yeah, but you're, well, but you're uh, and full of plastic, right? Yeah, but you're not swimming in the water. You would be in a, a little tube. Dome. Yeah, I like You'd that. Be in a tube. Yeah. Deep. So it now, doesn't now, really matter. Now, somebody arguing against you could be like, "Why not just do a dome above ground?" Well, well, that's fine, but that you know, you're not creating new land. Yeah. Oh, new yeah. land. I like yeah. this. Okay, yeah. I'm on board. New land. Yeah. Like yeah, it. and you just go and walk around. Maybe we have a suit on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I like you just it. Build, uh, yeah, you just build pressurized. How would you eat? Well, I bet you could grow. Fish. Grub I bet hub. you could grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You grow and you build a world down there. DoorDash, and then the whole world is underwater. Yeah, eventually. So the way that we started going above water, then we just started heading. Yeah, like if you're born in one of the underwater cities, mm -hmm. and you're like you dream, you're like the Little Mermaid. You dream of one day going on land. Yeah. Well, that was mm -hmm. like Kevin Costner's movie, right? Waterworld. A little bit, but I like that movie. Okay. Yeah. People seem to hate it. I yeah, liked it. I liked that movie way better than it got like a thirty percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and yeah. I thought it was at least a seventy-four. Yeah, I didn't like that he had like gills behind his ears or whatever, but uh, it well, was they still would fun. like to, yeah, you would like adapt to that. Yeah, yeah. You're going to need some AG1. That is true. Our next partner is AG1. All of us are trying to take AG1 every day. We all gave AG1 a try because we wanted increased energy and immune system support for our busy lifestyles. We like to take AG1 in the morning before starting the day, and it makes us feel like we're doing something good to cover all our nutritional bases. It's much easier to mix one scoop of powder in water once a day than to take a bunch of different things. It is the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute and costs less than $3 a day, and it tastes great. Since we travel so often, we use the single serving travel packs so we never have to miss a day when we're on the road. You can get free monthly delivery to make it even easier. Every scoop has 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients of the highest quality that have major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. Less than one gram of naturally occurring sugar per serving. AG1 has been part of millions of mornings since 2010. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash Nate. That's drinkag1.com slash Nate. Check it out. Well, I was going to end on some modern day explorers. We kind of already got into that, but you name some Richard Branson. I mean, would y'all consider Elon Musk? People are trying to yeah. go to other places. Yeah. Yeah. If you're trying to go to <clears throat> other places. Yeah. Uh, Bezos is trying to get the people to Mars and. Musk is trying to get all the trash to but Mars. No one's, and Nate had a joke yeah. about so at some point somebody's going to ask him to take the trash with him. No, yeah. I messed it up. Sorry. Yeah. He, well, yeah, why don't we just throw our trash in space? Yeah, we've, we've talked all, about that we've on We've all here. said that. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I don't know. But the root... you could argue, let's just keep doing it in the ocean and then let's <laughs> yeah. move to space. Right. If we're, if just... we're already doing so much in the ocean already. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, let's just go to space and we just keep dumping it in the. the sp- space is a much bigger ocean. Uh, yeah. I guess it's just how much energy it takes to get the trash. Kind of same thing. Can't breathe. Yeah. Float. Yeah. And there's no life up there as far as, well, as far as we know. I mean, some people, crazy people, even think that when they f- film space things, it's happening underwater mm. because the conditions are so similar. Obviously, these people are nuts, but yes. it is similar in, that's how they will practice for space, underwater. Yeah. And that is true. They okay. will practice underwater because, mm-hmm. you, you know, it's, you know, not a lot of gravity, can't breathe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you gotta. Yeah, we we should do. I watched. I started watching the Meg too. <laughs> 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 that movie is huge in Asia. Yeah, <laughs> the biggest movie in Asia. We, you and I saw the first one together. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> is it good? Yeah, it's just you, fun. Your complaint about Statham. the first one was the the whale or shark wasn't big enough. It, I think it could have been bigger. I think they can always be bigger. <laughs> I think I heard that movie was funded by the Chinese government. Meg? Yeah. I could see that for sure. Yeah, that's why they were pushing it so hard. Oh, well, you can totally see that. Nice. And the second one probably too. Yeah. I like that you, now say, that you, you say st- that. You started the second one. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's a, like an epic adventure. Yeah, of, I haven't got through it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did half and then I was tired. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's fun. Big it's like sharks. a modern day Jaws. I mean, extreme version. Of, yeah. You know, we watched Jaws recently and that's like, uh, it's the extreme version. It's just a big shark. It's just fun to think about those. Is this Jason Statham? Yeah. In those movies? Yep. Yeah. And he fights him and gets his family back. Oh, I love that. I, I love like Jason, Jason Statham, Statham so much. Yeah. yeah. He's Me the too. best. He does it. Yeah. He just fights him and kicks the sharks. <laughs> does he kick the sharks <laughs> with his foot? Maybe. <laughs> I would think so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's almost so a waste perfect. if Jason Statham's not kicking. That's yeah. so perfect. I watched one movie with Jason Statham that wasn't like I was hoping it'd be like the mm-hmm. kicking and it wasn't. And that's a, that was a tough one. The movie Snatch, you know, he was in that as not a fighting role. Yeah. And that movie was about fighting. Yeah. They but he was good in that. He was great in it. Yeah. But he, another one like it was... Yeah, you just want him to be. He's just super fun. Is that the one where Brad Pitt was the fighter? Yeah. Oh, so that was my favorite Brad it's Pitt. It's such role. a good movie. How's Liam Neeson? Brad Pitt's great. Yeah. How's Liam Neeson? He still does those fighting scenes. Yeah. You yeah, can do them. It's pretty crazy. You can do them late. Like even the Equalizer Three's out. Oh, you see how old is Liam Neeson? Yeah. Oh, Seventy one. He, he's. It's time for him to pass the torch, though. Who's the next great actor that's going to turn action? So I was. Uh, action star. Uh, that what needs to be there there are some good guys uh but they need to click like uh Matt Damon Matt Damon with the born like he oh, yeah. can be uh but I just don't know if they want to do it uh when did he start being an action star like that I think it, it was taken it was after Batman. it was after love actually 2001 the, the first batman oh, batman yeah, begins it, it all the information wow. oh star wars too the first yeah. uh, one of the Star yeah. Wars prequels, he was a bit of an action guy. Oh, but I was. mean, so Taken was the first. Taken was what? So how old was he when he did Taken? He was probably fifty. If yeah. it was around two thousand five, then it, then he'd be uh, you know fifty three. Yeah, fifty six. Mm. So you were wrong, Joe. Mm. Tim Barry reinvented his career well, as an action star. So I could still be an action 56. star because I wasn't sprung, but I didn't really. Yes. Play you, get, you played a guy that would be an action because mm-hmm. you were a, a mm-hmm. serial killer. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if if Greg does a spinoff, have mm-hmm. you done any stage fighting classes? No, mm-hmm. no, but I still could. I mean, yeah, yeah not too late. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think Bates is not one that you're going to really know he's behind it, but he's behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like. Um, the usual suspects. I'm gonna be the guy at the end that. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. so, Kaiser Sosa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're the Kaiser. He's the Kaiser Sosa. He's yeah. the true brains behind this podcast. And Nate Lane. Oh, well, I think yeah. that's a given. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is. He's the one that puts all this together. Well, that'd be cool if you turn out to be the real brains behind it. Liam Neeson, though, he is the. I mean, he puts all this stuff together. Liam Neeson. I'm. I, yeah, I'm the talent. Yeah. Oh. I'd never heard of <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Liam Neeson <laughs> until um, Schindler's List. 
and right. he might have must have been in his forties then. Yeah, yeah, I think he was like a great stage actor in his you know twenties and thirties. It's weird to discover Liam Neeson and Taken, and then go watch the movie Love Actually. I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean? just crying with his little boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? what? Yeah, I don't know if I could want do do that. His, uh, his scene in um, uh, that Ricky Gervais Steve Merchant show where he wants to oh, become yeah. a comedian. Yeah. Oh, so great! Is one the of the improv scene? scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's great. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Funny. I don't know. You gotta. Oh, it's have good. to watch. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah, to watch yeah. it. Yeah, it's very funny. Well, anyways, there's some. Other, I mean, they are searching the sea. There's people. James Cameron's doing a lot of stuff to. Yeah, but they just the went sea. down there. That one thing went real bad for those guys. Yeah, they went down. Oh yeah. Uh, Meg and Meg too. They're searching <laughs> the bottom of the sea because uh, yeah. there's creatures probably down there we don't even know about. Yeah. One guy on some National Geographic thing. He was talking about he. They went so deep, and it looked like there was a beach underwater, and they tried to go down, and the water was so uh like so much salt content whatever you would say there was so thick they couldn't go down further they were bouncing but it was like there were shells and stuff and it was like this water was running up on the beach really i saw that on something wow. but uh TikTok. Yeah. yeah but it was from a national geographic type thing yeah. so it's like it's just wild what's down there yeah that's why i'm saying like let's do the ocean yeah mm -hmm. it was agree. from a one of your propaganda channels, so yeah, so mm -hmm. so, so we can believe it. So you can believe, it. yeah. Okay, That's a, yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'd that'd be National Geographic, though. If you were a conspiracy, you'd be like, you know, this is right up your alley. Right, you believe everything they say. <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, Aaron with his Notre Dame degree is the guy, but you filling in for him is a Davidson alumni is the educated one i've heard i've heard him on this podcast he's definitely smarter than smarter than me he knows a lot of facts yeah you i was know a lot of stuff though i'm i mean i i've just surprised myself everything i've said yeah so you really i think there's gonna be a lot of, of fact checkers listening that are like what joe said was a little bit off there yeah i suspect i could see that well hopefully our back and forth will deflect from any of that and it'll all come back on me yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you been getting have you been getting some flack for yeah. saying you don't believe in space yeah but i i'm not saying i don't believe yeah. <laughs> just have this double down on it again we're just having it was just yeah. being silly and fun i like to talk about it i think it's fun but people mm. some people do not find it to be fun yeah the funny thing is the way they defend dusty because they'll be like ah this guy you know he some people want to dump Dusty, and then people defend him. Very say, few people, yeah. by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very few people. But then- The, the, just the super pro-science crowd or something? <laughs> no, I wouldn't even call them that. But then everyone just will come regular to- regular people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they'll come to Dusty's defense. <laughs> but then they'll be like, look, I find his viewpoints crazy too, but <laughs> we really love Dusty, and we want to- You know, it's so funny how they, they always say, I think it's wild myself, but you know, he's a fun guy. Yeah, I mean, isn't it boring if we all believe the same things? If yeah. we all believe so. the same thing. I, right? I believe yeah. that. I think yeah. it's boring. It's if we all believe too. the same thing, we'd be brainwashed. Yeah, we got to spice it mm -hmm. up a Your bit, Patrice O'Neill thing just came up again on a podcast. Really? Somebody brought it up. I forgot whose it was, but they they told the story about Patrice O'Neill and you and dinosaurs. And, yeah. And a few people have sent it and say, hey, Nate just got mentioned again. That, that oh, story. Really? Yeah. Huh. Where, yeah. Where was it? I'll find out. Yeah. I, I forgot. Uh, all right. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we got to go. Well, yeah. 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 I got to uh, go into a little softball game. Uh, last softball game. Ooh. For Harper's all team. Right. Nice. Last of the season. Yeah. Uh, she's a catcher. I was a catcher. So it's very exciting. That's awesome. Very fun stuff. Uh, all right. This week, Showcase is out. Showcase is out. Uh, go to Nate Land uh, YouTube, and you can see the Showcase. You see Joe Zimmerman's special, the cult classic. Uh, awesome, awesome things to watch. This is all the very beginning of uh, what we're trying to start at the Nate Land Company. And... Uh, you know, yeah, you guys are gracious being a part of it and seeing all this stuff. And we continue to try to put out whatever we can or, you know, do the best we can do. Uh, I will be on the road. Uh, yeah, Portland, Radio City. Uh, I mean, you know, it's all, it's everywhere. So uh, you can go check that stuff out. October 27th and 28th, I'm at Hyenas Comedy Club in Dallas and Fort Worth. Two nights in Dallas, October 27th. I mean, sorry, two shows in Dallas, October 27th. Two shows in Fort Worth on the 28th. 
please come. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to be in Syracuse, New York at the Funny Bone. And I don't usually sell a lot of tickets there, but I go every year and it's so much fun. Mm. So do come because uh, it's going to be great. I have a lot of fun there. And I probably shouldn't tell people I don't normally sell a lot of tickets there, but I'm just saying, do yeah. come because it's going to be great. Uh, I'll be at the Acme Comedy Club in Minneapolis, headlining October 25 to 28. Oh. Minneapolis, I'd love it if you came. And then I'll be back with Nate in Las Vegas, November yeah. 11 and 12. That'll be very fun. Yeah. And then I've got, I'm all over these little towns around the Midwest for the next three weeks, which you can find on my website. But mostly just, I want you to check out the special Cold yes. Classic mm, on Cold YouTube. Classic. It's free. It's great. Nate yeah. directed. Oh, it's free. free. It's great. You know what? And since this is a Columbus episode, I, in two weeks, I'll be at the Columbus Funny Bone. I was born in Columbus. And uh, no. I'm excited to be there. So come awesome. see me. That's one of the best clubs. I love that club. Yeah. I love them all. You know, I love Syracuse. I love Columbus. It's going to be great. I love the people. Everything's wonderful. Everything's wonderful. Uh, all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you don't have to end with a lie, Dusty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just turned that into propaganda. <laughs> yeah. Well, keep you guessing. You, know what yeah. I mean? you don't know what's going on. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, as always, we love you. Hope you see you out. And uh, yeah, we love you. See you next week. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetsy, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.